Thank you for joining us. I'm Brandon Holsworth, and this is my co-host in crime, Matthew Austin. Today on the show, today being Wednesday, May 30th, we're going to have a couple of different things. We're redoing So You Want to Be a Cigar Rep. A lot of that information, we kind of, when, when we went through the editing process, some things got mixed. I'll be honest, I was probably drinking when I was doing it. Our product spotlight today is going to be The Judge by my father. Great stick. One of my own personal favorites, man. We'll be back in just a minute. Thank you. This is Stick Man. Hi, I'm Brandon Holsworth, and I work for Elliot Seward at the New Cigar Warehouse at 10910 North Central Expressway in Dallas or Royal in 75. My brother Matthew Austin works at Elite Cigar over in Addison, Texas with Kent Pennington. Anyway you look at it, we might work for competing stores, but we're still brothers of the leaf. We still have a great love of cigars, a great friendship, and a true love for this industry. So sit back, take just a few minutes, you might learn something, you might get a good laugh. Oh, and by the way, this is Stick Man. So you're joining us today at the Elliott Seward Studio Studio B here at the New Cigar Warehouse, and that's 10910 North Central Expressway here on Dallas Tollway, Dallas Central Expressway, forgive me. Uh, Matt, we're gonna go ahead and start it off with the so you want to be a cigar rep. Let me hear some of the questions that you actually had. Tell us the pros and cons of being in-house and being independent. I'm very curious. I'm trying because you know I want to be a rep. Yeah. So I'm trying to make sure this is what I want to do before I jump into it. As far as the pros and cons for either in-house or independent, there's a lot of great stuff about this job. You're going to see a lot of beautiful country. You're going to meet a lot of people that'll be friends, that'll become friends to you and family that you'll know the rest of your life. You can make a lot of good money. Seems like most cigar shops you go into after four o'clock, someone's got a thousand year old scotch filtered through the Shroud of Turan. You're gonna drink a lot of great alcohol, smoke a lot of great cigars. It's just a whirlwind, whirling dervish of a good time. Only reason that I came off the road myself was because my son came to live with me. And I was afraid my wife was gonna leave me because she only saw me every once in a while. But it's a wonderful time, wonderful friends, wonderful chance to make money. There's really two types of reps in the repping game. There's the in-house and the independent and or slash broker. They're both the same thing. In-house reps work for one company. They work under one umbrella. Their core product line is their product line. The only time there are ever changes to it are when the company adds or takes away from it. They have a credit card for gas hotels and food and they have a base salary which means they're going to have a smaller commission but they're going to have a cushion underneath of it. Independence are the way of the warrior. They pay their own bills, their own gas, their own hotels and their own food but they have a stable of their own lines which they can either say I don't want or pick up or keep depending on the process. Did I say that right? Yeah. Independent reps aren't beholden to anybody. They don't have any forms, like an in-house rep, when you're beholden to a company, is going to want to know where you were on Monday, they're going to want to know who you spoke with, they're going to know how many sticks were on the shelves, how many sticks were up top, the exact name of the clerk that you spoke to, email addresses, all of this. Sometimes the forms can be kind of lengthy. With independent reps, you don't know them that at all. You know, uh, if, but here's the deal, if you don't go out and get in your car, you're not going to make any money. Now, the best way to become a rep is, for me personally, is to work in a store, all right? So you work in a store, you get to meet these guys, you get to meet the figureheads as they come in. A lot of times, and this is the way that you need to do it, is these companies need to go to the manager first. So Matt, uh, the old Padron system, or you know, the, uh, uh, the way of respect is that if somebody said, man, I like that Matt kid, they would go to Kent Pennington at Elite Cigar, over there off Beltline Road where you work, and they'd say, Kent, I really think that Matt would be a great fit for our company. Would you be opposed to me hiring him? Now, here's the problem about being a great worker. They could go, man, I know that Matt really wants to do it, but we can't really afford to lose him right now. And they could say, hey man, right now we're really shorthanded. Could you wait a little while? A lot of these companies can, a lot of these companies can't. Well, how long do you want me to wait? You tell me, right? 
on the other side of that, they could say, no, he wouldn't make a good rep, and they could totally shoot you in the foot, but Ken wouldn't do that. No. If a company comes to you directly before they talk to the boss, I've seen in a lot of cases where it truly pisses the company off. Like, hey, man, you came in and fleeced one of my people without asking me. Now I've got to replace this person. It would have been nice to give me a heads up, so I could have started looking for a replacement for them. You know what I mean? So let me ask this. What if, like for my, my situation, what if I wanted to be a rep and I reached out to those companies? That would be a little bit of a different scenario. So first things first, you would reach out to the company because you know they're looking for somebody because, you know, the word on the street and you're good friends with most of the reps. You would reach out to them and they'd say, well, Matt, uh, you know, we'll talk about this on this date or okay. let me get back with you. The next step would be respectfully to call Kent Pennington and say, then that's where the process starts on the other side of it. I personally would tell Kent or, you know, like I did with Elliot, you know, hey, I really would like to be a rep. Will you help me out? And you'll know from there whether they say yes or no. You know what I mean? Like, eh, you know, uh, Brandon, uh, you're kind of late all the time. You're kind of lazy. I don't know about this rep thing for you. You can't get here on time. How are you going to drive across five states? Gotcha. And then, you know, because a lot because they know what they want in a rep. And right. you becoming a rep means you're going to be their rep and they'll be, de you know, not dependent on you but then your relationship with them will have to be on a better level. So they can tell you the things that they'd like to see, and they're really not trying to tell you the things that they like to see for you when you become a rep. They're like pretty much trying to tell you the things that they want to see while you work for them right. before they help make you a rep. So that's one way. Say I'm the store owner and you are one of my favorite customers, right? And you're like, man, this, these guys are awesome. These guys seem to live life and kick ass and drive across country and eat great barbecue and <laughs> they make good money and they drink fine alcohol and you're like that's what I want for me well you want to make yourself known to different cigar shops as that guy that gets around and you know drop drop a little hint every once in a while hey Mr. Pennington off of Beltline Road in Addison where they have a great Cuban sandwich see that shameless self-promotion <laughs> but uh, you want to make sure that you know people so when you got those guys that buy their cigars from the internet who come in one day and say, I want to be a cigar rep, that is the, actually the antithesis for a cigar rep is an internet buyer. You want to make sure that you know people. So when the job comes up, they can go, I can go, someone will come to me and they'll go, hey man, do you know anybody make a good rep? And I go, well, I got this guy, Matthew, and uh, he's a solid guy. Uh, he's got this in his experience. I want to make sure that that owner knows you well enough so he can say some things about you as a person to said company. Now sometimes you're gonna see, uh, you know, if you check like uh, online, you know, with the job finders, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see a company that'll say, hey, we're looking for a rep of this area, but it won't tell you what company it is. Right. Sometimes those companies are upset with the rep that they have, the rep is, you know, underperforming, is gone, or they're looking for a rep in that area. Okay. So I mean, that's one way. Always, you know, search out all avenues, you know, because some of these companies want people with zero, uh, history because then they can teach you the way that they want things to be done. So basically you don't come in there hard-headed knowing everything. And everybody. I know everything I can't be taught. All right. So I can understand why some of these companies would want that. Reach out to cigar companies. So, But reaching out this way usually means you're going the independent route. You're going to reach out to a cigar company that you might be interested in and say, hey, do you have a rep in this area? And they're going to say yes or no. And you're going to say, hey, well, these are the stores I go to. These are the folks that I know. I would be more than happy to rep your product line for you. So let's say that you reached out to that company, and they said, we'll pick you up as an independent, right? You start working around your territory. You're seeing your retailers. You're showing love. You're doing in-stores. There's a good chance that the next time an in-house job comes up, that in-house guy is going to come to Matt and he's going to go, Matt, who am I? I need, I need a full-time in-house guy. And they're going to go, well, that Brandon, man, man, I really wish he had a better line. I really wish we could support him. He's a great guy. He keeps his events. He comes in. He does everything he can do. His product line isn't moving, but he's really hustling. He shows a lot of favor. And that's very, very important. So all of a sudden, you'll get a phone call. And most of the phone calls are, hey, Matt. How you doing, man? It's Brandon from Company X. I'm going to be in town next week. I was hoping we could meet up and have a drink. 
that is the equivalence of I'm going to do an interview with you all right and so you want to make sure that you are in town and if you can't you tell them I want to meet with you but I'm in another state at an event is there any way you might be able to make it into that state because I'm not going to let my retailers down right. and bosses national sales managers they love to hear that because you know what that might be your last event with that company right so today's product spotlight is from my father it's the judge one of my personal favorites as well as yours i'm giving a holesworth thumbs up thumbs up the judge by my father is rolled at the my father factory in esteli nicaragua it has an ecuadorian wrapper and do you know why it has an ecuadorian wrapper do I know why? A lot of com a lot of these companies. Do you know why a lot of companies use Ecuadorian? Oh. Uh, because there's so much cloud coverage that they don't need to put the shades up. It's just a natural thing that gives them this soft, beautiful wrappers, beautiful shiny, beautiful, shiny wrappers that don't have that sun-grown veiny look to them. Hmm. Yeah. It has a Nicaraguan binder and a Nicaraguan filler. It's actually pretty common that most of these companies are using Ecuador. It's just because it's such an easy place to grow wrapper leaf. You know, uh, you got elevation height plus the natural cloud cover, big, beautiful, soft leaves, and uh, you know, it's it's more of a standard now. I, I think just about everybody does it. I think uh, the only person doing a shade-grown tobacco in Esteli itself, I think, is A.J. Fernandez. The judge's personal favorite. The first time I had it, uh, I think I had allergies. I wasn't wasn't hitting on me the right way, but I always try to have a cigar two or three times before I make a final judgment, unless it's just a turd out of the gate. And my father, the judge, is an absolute favorite with me and a lot of the guys here. Yeah, it's a great stick. How's it do over with you guys at Elite? It doesn't stay in stock. Yeah, and he doesn't yeah. hear. He doesn't hear. It's just a great stick. It's a great stick. This week's Humidor Master shout-out goes out to Chris Booker at Cigar Chateau in Wichita, Kansas. Chris knows his stuff back and forth. He knows both sides of the fence because he was a rep that went back into the store. Okay. Great guy. Uh, mad talking trash. Fun, <laughs> fun guy. What kind of guy? <laughs> uh, it was always, yeah, it was hard to get him out of the store at night because he's a family man, and I respected that too, and that's why he came off the road. Great guy, great palate. Cigar Chateau is a phenomenal store up there in Kansas, and I'll tell you that he's one of the he's one of the guys that I miss from the road. So Chris Booker, here's to you, and uh, much love from here at the Stickman team. Make sure you talk trash to him when you go in the store. He's a terrible <laughs> person. Well, that's the show, guys. Appreciate y'all tuning in. If you liked our show, um, please hit the subscribe and the bell, so that way you'll be notified of the new episodes that we put out. Um, if you'd like to follow me, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Rasta Cigar Guy. And I'm Brandon Holsworth. If you're interested in following me on Instagram, I'm GWT underscore Brandon. Then on Facebook, I'm Brandon Cornelius Holsworth. I want to thank you again for tuning in. This has been Stickman. <laughs>